Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about solving log equations and their inequalities. So let's start off with some simple ones. We have log base 9 of x equals 3 halves. First thing I'm going to do here is get it into a different form. When x is inside that log, it's kind of tricky to work with. So instead of log form, I'm going to go to exponential form. So 9 to the 3 halves equals x. 9 to the 3 halves equals x. I'm now going to simplify this. Remember, it's power over root. So I have 9 to the third power and then the square root of it. But I can do that in whichever order I like. So I'm going to do the square root first. Square root of 9 to the third power. So square root of 9 is 3. I still have to raise it to the third. And 3 to the third is 27. So x is 27. Next, we're going to scooch over here. Log base 16 of x equals 5 halves. Again, I'm going to go into exponential form. So 16 to the 5 halves equals x. Again, power over root. I don't want to take 16 to the 5th power, so instead I'm going to do the square root first. What's the square root of 16? 4. So I now have 4 to the 5th equals x. And 4 to the 5th is 1,024. Big number. But still, none of that is difficult work on its own. So just take everything step by step, and you'll be fine. If it's in log form and it seems tricky, go to exponential form. And the same is true the other way. If exponential form seems difficult, go to log form. We're just not at that point yet. Now, let's solve this log. And if you look at your book, the property of equality for log functions, well, that pretty much says if both logs are the same, so it's the same kind of log, we only know this kind of log right now, and it's the same base, well then we can cancel both of them. I'm just left with their innards, or their insides. And that is true here, just like it was way back when we were doing exponents, where if you had the same base, then you could just look at the exponents. The same is true here. If I have the same log and same base, well then I can look at the stuff on the inside. So x squared minus 15 is gonna have to equal that 2x. Now, I have an x squared, so I'm probably going to have two solutions. So I'm going to get everything to the left side and then see if I can factor. So I'm going to subtract that 2x over. So I got negative 2x minus 15 equals 0. Let's try and factor that. It's a typical trinomial factoring. So I'm going to have an x and an x. Well, what multiplies to get negative 15 adds up to get a negative 2. Well, 5 and 3 multiply to get me 15. It's a negative 15, so let's try negative 5 and positive 3. That adds up to get a negative 2. So negative 5 and plus 3. I set each set of parentheses equal to 0 to um, figure out what x is. So I have x minus 5 equals 0. Well, that's x is 5. Then I have x plus 3 equals 0. And x equals negative 3. So I have two answers, but just like we've happened before, or we've had happen before, we have to check for extraneous solutions. And we also have to keep in mind that the domain for logs, or the stuff I'm allowed to plug into a log, has to be a positive number. It can't be zero or less than zero. So let's take those numbers and plug them in. I'm gonna do the, let's do the five first. So I'm gonna have five squared minus 15 does that equal, I'm going to put a little question mark because I, I don't know that for sure yet, does that equal log base 3 of 2 times 5? So that's log base 3 of 25 minus 15. Does that equal log base 3 of 10? So this is going to be log of 10, well, log base 3 of 10, and log base 3 of 10. That is perfectly fine because I'm not plugging, or I'm not gonna have negative numbers going into my log, okay? And uh, you'll see here in a second that sometimes it's okay initially, but in the end it won't be. But negative 10 is what's actually going into log. Sorry, that was the class change bell going on. And this is all good, because log base three of 10 does in fact equal log base three of 10. Let's try it with uh, the negative three there. Let's try that. So the five we know works log base 3 of, and we're going to have three negative 3 squared, which is going to be a 9, minus 15. Does that equal log base 3 
of 2 times negative 3. Well, that's going to be log base 3 of negative 6. And I'm not even going to finish because I can't have a negative going into a log. So it's just the positive 5 that works. Negative 3 does not. But again, I took the logs and I got rid of them because they were both the same. And then I solved like I would have with a quadratic. Next, we have this little fella. And again, I'm going to go from log form to exponential form. So 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is less than x, is less than x. So x must be greater than 81, or 81 is less than x. Not too complicated in this one, but the next one gets a little bit tricky. Here, we're going to have to solve this, and then we're going to double check the domain and make sure everything is greater than 0. So I notice I have the same kind of log, and it's the same base. So those are going to go away. I'm left with x plus 3 is greater than 2x plus 1. Subtract an x. 3 is greater than x. Subtract the 1. 2 is greater than x. Awesome. That looks fine. But I also have to check and make sure that that is okay for each of my domains. So remember, I can't plug in a number that's less than, um, less than 0. So I have to say x plus 3 must be greater than 0, and I'm going to have to solve for that one. I'm going to have to do the same thing with 2x plus 1. It must also be greater than 0. And let's see where this gets us. Subtract our 3. So x is, there we go, greater than negative 3. Subtract 1. So I have x must be greater than a negative 3, and x must be greater than a negative 1 half. And I have to make sure all of this works well together. So I'm going to do a little number line now. Where I have negative 3 way over here, negative 1 half, 0, and 2. Let's we'll start off with that one. So I'm open circle, and x is less than, so that one goes that direction. Negative 1 half, x is bigger, x is greater than negative 3. Where do all of these lines overlap? From here to here. They are not closed circles, for at least for these two dots. So I am between negative 1 half and 2, not including those. So I'm an x such that x must be between negative 1 half and 2. All right, hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please click that like button that's going to be down here below. And as I make more of these videos related to my Unit 7, I will put them over there so you can get to the next one. Have a great day, folks.